All right, everybody, we're back. Brand new Cabral concept today will hopefully be a fun one for you. This question came in over one of the weekend shows, and I said, I want to make this its own topic. And that's because it's going through what's being promoted as a revolutionary new low-calorie fat substitute being put in some of people's favorite foods. So that means it's taking down the calories at half of many different foods out there. And I'm going to share what foods those are in just a moment. But I always want to explore, is this healthy? Is this safe? And not allow big food and basically the media control the way that we think. So I'm going to be taking you through the four main studies on this today. And also what to look for on food labels, because you may see it show up as a reduced calorie fat substitute, one of the names, an EPG oil, or its actual name, which is a sterified propoxylated glycerol, all right, or EPG. So we're just going to refer to as a sterified propoxylated glycerol. Glycerol, which is its name, as EPG. And I'll show you exactly what it is. If you want to go to stephencabral.com slash 3162, I'll write it out there for you. But basically what it is, it's, it's synthetic, so it's made in a lab. And I'm not saying that that's the end of the world. I'm not saying that at all. But what they've done is they've actually taken and created a new fat or a fat substitute. So they've taken a synthetic fat substitute and it's been created by taking glycerol, which is actually a naturally occurring alcohol found in fats. And they've combined that with propylene oxalate or oxide. And then they've esterified that with fats. So basically all that means is that they've taken molecules, we'll call them like that, from other types of organic and inorganic to create a new fat substitute that is now very low calorie. So let me just give you an example. Let's say that you have your average uh, favorite ice cream. Let's say that it's a low, lower fat one. It will often still have like eight to 10 uh, grams of fat per small amount, per like half a cup or so. And most people eat much more than that, right? So let's just, let's call it 10 as a lower calorie, right? Well, times nine, as a multiple for calories per gram of fat, you're looking at 90 calories. Okay, and that's the minimum. You're probably closer to like 150 calories from fat for just a half a cup and 300 calories just from fat for like maybe a cup worth or a little bit more than that. But that doesn't even take into consideration the carbohydrates, the sugars, and other things like that as well. So if you're looking at this as how could it reduce calories? Well, for a lot of these, it's taking the calories in half. Or even more dramatically, if something is lower carb and it was just a higher fat-based food. Let's get into this a little bit deeper. So EPG, EPG oil, is being used in a lot of low-calorie snacks. And if you're watching this in video, you're going to see a lot of air quotes today. And that's because these low-calorie snacks have been around for over 20 years, 30 years, well over 30 years as marketing, but it doesn't mean that they're healthy. Is this healthy? Well, let's take a look at it because we know Olestra, which was created a couple decades ago, was a low-calorie fat that was created. The problem with that is that it caused loose stool for many people, which is pretty much why it was pulled off the market. And that's because it created a digestin, digestive resistant fat. That means it went into your stomach as essentially a gel, an oil, and it was not able to be broken down, which is why the calories didn't count. And so when we look at that, we say, okay, but what happened? Well, the side effect was literally people having loose stool. And nobody wants to have diarrhea, especially you're out and you're like, what's going on here? I ate some Olester based potato chips and now you have to run to the bathroom. So not ideal. Okay. So the four studies that I was able to pull up on this that really had the greatest amount of data, and I'm going to give it to you from an unbiased perspective, was no human based studies that I've seen yet. There was one in rats, a second one in rats, a third one in micro pigs, and a fourth one in rabbits. And I'm going to go through each one of these studies really quickly and then give you the main takeaways. So the first one on rats is that it assessed the reproductive toxicity of EPG in rats. They were administered the EPG in various dosage to their current diet. The study found no consistent treatment related effects on body weight, feed consumption, reproductive incidences, or offspring development. Some reproductions in serum vitamin D, 
and liver vitamin A and E were observed, but they were not considered biologically significant. I'm going to get back to that in just a moment because that's an important one to remember. Okay, they found another one in rats, and it looked at the toxicity over 90 days. The rats were fed diets containing EPG at different concentrations. The results showed no significant adverse effects on, again, weight, food consumption, or clinical pathology. And that just simply means disease. There were some changes in liver weight and mild effects on liver enzymes, but these were not considered toxicologically relevant. Third one, in micropigs. Similar to the rat study, this investigation looked at the effects of EPG in micropigs. The animals were fed EPG at different dosage for 90 days. No significant adverse effects were found in body weight, food intake, or general health. Minor changes in liver enzymes were noted, but deemed non-toxic. All right, let's go over the last one, and then I want to give you one update on this. This one was done in rabbits. Study explored the potential development of toxicity in rabbits. Pregnant rabbits were given EPG at various dosages, and no significant effects were observed on maternal health or fetal development. The study concluded that EPG does not pose development risks at the tested dosages. Okay, so collectively, when they looked at all of these different studies, what they found was um, that it did not seem to pose a risk, at least many of these over 90 days, in the short term. They found some potential inflammation or liver-based issues, which caused an elevation in some liver enzymes. They found in both rats and micro pigs that it actually lowered their vitamin D levels, serum just means blood, their blood vitamin D levels, and oftentimes lower vitamin A and E with the EPG treated animals, but not the others. Now I will say to be fair, is that the groups received quite a large amount of EPG. So here's what they were given. Three and five grams uh, per kilogram of body weight each day. So let's just say my body weight's about 75 or so kilos or kilograms. So that would be five grams for every essentially kilogram. And when I look at that for body weight, that, that's a large dosage. Now, it did not cause the animals to eat less. That's an important one to look at that. And there didn't seem to be any major toxicity. So I do want to share that because that is the unbiased look at that. I do have to say there was some liver toxicity. Now, the, the authors of these studies deemed it not clinically significant, not high enough to cause a, a potential disturbance. Now, again, this was only over 90 days for three of these studies, I believe. Well, the pregnancy in the uh, rabbits was not, but it did show lowered fat soluble vitamins. That is vitamin D, it's vitamin E, it's vitamin K, and it's vitamin, well, A, D, E, and K. Okay. I didn't see that they tested vitamin K, but I did see lower levels of D, E, and A. Now, one of the reasons why this is significant is because much of that is also processed in the liver. So could this EPG be causing a little bit more of a liver toxicity issue than is being let on? I don't know. No human studies or other studies that I've seen in larger uh, animals have been done to date. But what I can tell you is in these studies, although most short term, no major toxicity issues, but at least the worry of potentially lowering some of these fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, so just a couple other notes on this, and then I'll give you my main takeaway. EPG is mainly being used as a low-calorie fat substitute, but it's also mainly being used in processed foods. So typically in baked goods, in low-calorie packaged snacks, and in things like ice cream. So when I look at this, I say, okay, but it's not being used in any whole foods. It's not even being used in any like whole foods that are minorly processed. So what does that mean? Well, it's like, okay, let's take oats in their whole form and then we make them into rolled oats. It's still just oats, right? Or let's say like in even more processed, you're taking einkorn, um, wheat or, or flour and make it into sourdough. It's still, it's not being, it's like, yes, you're taking the grain and you're milling it, but it's still not being used in that. 
Um, it's not being used, of course, in any fruits and vegetables. It's not being used in any meats, eggs, or fish. So really what we're looking at is this is something that's being used in processed foods. Now, my goal for everyone is not to be perfect. I'm not perfect either. But you want to eat a predominantly whole food diet. Like that's the goal. And when you're eating these processed foods, that's part of a flex meal or a cheat meal. And hopefully that's not more than maybe once or twice a week where you're having your favorite ice cream or your favorite pizza or whatever it might be. And of even some of those can be made healthier, right? Um, you can use the new Ninja Creamy and all these different things like to make it a healthier version. But if you're just, you're out, you want to enjoy whatever it is, you go to the supermarket, you get your favorite thing. What I'm, what I'm worried about is that we're eating more and more fake food. This is absolutely a fake food. It doesn't seem to be toxic from the initial animal-based studies or rat mice-based studies that we have right now, but I am worried for chronic-based use of those individuals that eat these processed foods more on a daily basis. So am I worried about most of the people listening to this podcast? Absolutely not. But my worry is that the general public says, oh, I can eat now the whole pint of ice cream because it's half or less than half the calories. And at that point, we start to consume more and more of this EPG that we don't know the long-term side effects of with chronic use. In the short term, every once in a while, even if you only had a small amount once a week, doesn't seem like a big deal to me, honestly. What Am I going to do it? No. I would rather have whatever the fat is in it that's more to nature. Like, let's just say you made an ice cream with like raw milk or whatever you wanted and even just like an organic milk and it had some of its own, own sugar and whatever it is. If I'm doing that once a week, I'm doing that once a week rather than putting in a synthetic fat that I don't know the long-term potential issues. And also, this is not going to digest well with everyone. So everyone's going to have to decide if it's the right fit for them. But I wanted to bring you the unbiased look at it. Hopefully this was helpful. I'll link up those studies. You can check them out yourself at stevencabral.com slash 3162. As always, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.